What's good with you? This is Professor Cornelius Ward, and you are here to profit with the professor. I am excited about what I got to show you guys today. Um, I want to look at Kiwi in once again, um, and I want to see if we can capture what I believe to be uh, an aggressive opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. And I'm just going to go ahead for those who just want me to jump right into it, give you the answer. I'm going to give you that. And then for those who want to hear the analysis of uh, the technical analysis, uh, stay a little longer for that. The whole thing shouldn't take me longer than five minutes, though. All right. But don't hold me to it. <laughs> All right. Let's get started with uh, where I'm at. So I have uh, three sell positions. I have one at 89.33 uh 89 as well so these are two sell limit orders uh, first sell limit order again is at 89 second one is at 89.33 uh below current price i have a sell stop order at 88.33 so all together we call this dollar cost averaging it's when you take whatever your normal position size would be and you divide it up into smaller pieces so if you would normally trade a standard lot you would put three um 33,333 unit positions uh, in there. Uh, to make it even simpler, let's say you, you traded a standard lot, you can divide that up into four uh, 25,000 unit positions, and that's how you would dollar cost average. And it just kind of lowers your risk when you do it that way, but still allows you to uh, capitalize. And if all of them hit and, and go for it, then uh, you win anyway. So anyway, that's what I'm doing here. If it respects uh, this level here that I believe to be uh, resistance, and it is a minor resistance level, in my opinion, based on the higher time frame, and we'll take a look at that for those who are going to stay uh, a little longer for technical analysis. Uh, but if that works out, then I see take profit first one. I'm going to shave a quarter of my position off at 87.80. Secondly, I'm going to shave off at 86.80 then at 86.15 and lastly if it goes down this far to 84.90 i don't believe it's going to go any lower than this and i'll tell you why in just a bit when we get to the technical analysis part uh so because i don't believe it's going to go any lower than this i just have these two uh orders here first buy limit order at 84.60 second one at 84 with a tight stop loss in my opinion at 83.60 i'm the king of swing that's what i love to do swing trade so this is too tight for me, but uh, for many of you, I know you don't like it when you don't see my stop loss. So just to appease you, I go ahead and put something on there. But you put yours wherever your risk tolerance is. All right. Um, now, let's get to some technical analysis. Why do I tend to look at this and think it's coming down? As a matter of fact, wow, uh, P2P indicator is already showing some selling pressure coming down. It's already starting to show some supply here. It's happening in real time, guys. Oh, man, this is lovely. All right. So. Uh, my order, did it trigger? It must've got added to one of these because I had an order on here. Oh, it's the same size. I get it. All right, let me change that. That's why it's rejecting it. I'm in uh, the US and we can't trade positions uh, of the same size. Oh, I have insufficient margin. Okay, so I have used up all my money, guys. Well, anyway, if you have money left over, because <laughs> I forgot I'm scalping uh, another pair, so I've put a big position on that one. So anyway, let's get back to this here. Um, I'm selling short here. It looks like it already triggered at 88.33, and so I gave you guys all that information, but now let's, let's look at why I believe this might be happening. Um, Let's go here to the charts first. So I'm going over here, choosing a Kiwi in. As you guys can see, there's some information here. If you drag that up just a little bit like that, you'll find this uh, tab here, this button called More Technicals. All right, More Technicals. So when you go to More Technicals, uh, it pulls up these technical indicators is what they are. And so we're just going to leave it on the one day chart. And please bear with me, those of you who understand what this is, bear with me for those who don't. Uh, we want to make sure everybody ha is on an equal playing field with learning how to read these things and make some money here. All right. So 
we have two different types of indicators here, oscillators and moving averages, okay? So uh, for oscillators and moving averages, they both are attempting to try to do the same thing, and that is figure out where price is going. That's the agenda of both of them. Uh, how they determine how price is going is just a little different, though. Uh, what moving averages do, uh, these over here, uh, moving averages, and you can see all down here, these are the top ones that are generally used uh, by most novices. Okay, so these moving averages here, what they do is they take the closing price of each day or whatever time frame, your time period you're on. So we're on the daily. So for every day, whatever the closing price is for that day, it averages out that price by however many days. So this one is 10 days, this one's is 20, uh, this one here is 50, that's 100, so on and so forth. So depending on how many days, we'll determine um, how many closing prices are gonna be used in the average, all right? And then it gives that average price. So here you go, right here. It's basically saying that the Kiwi Yen, the average price is 87.57 over the last 10 days based on the EMA. That's what that's saying. And so with that information, it's telling you you should be buying right now. Okay. And so on and so forth. Now, how is the oscillator different from a moving average? What an oscillator does is it measures what they call momentum. And momentum is you want to see, is it keeping up the trend that the moving average is calculating? Because that's what moving averages are doing. What they're doing is they're averaging out that price again. And if that price every time you average it out and you keep adding a new day, it keeps going up and up and up, then that means the trend is up. And if the trend is up, you should be buying. That's where that idea comes from, okay? So an oscillator is doing something a little different. It's taking the information, which is this value here, but it compares this value to today's price, the current price. And if you look way up here, you can see the current price is at 88.41. Or if we look over here to the right, which is much easier, uh, it's at 88.40, okay? So if the average, moving average, it says 87.57, but over here, this says 88, that means price is still above the average, meaning the momentum is up, okay? So that's what the oscillator is doing. It's comparing current price with uh, the moving average. Now, why would an oscillator show strong buying but then start to move into neutral and selling position? Because this number keeps lowering and getting closer and closer to the moving average number. And once this number goes below the moving average number, then this thing is really going to start telling you to start selling. But then this number is going to start going down as well, and it's going to start saying to sell. I bring all of that up because we're already starting to see neutral territory and less buying on the oscillator side. This would start giving us our first clue as to what may happen with trend. It starts to tell us ahead of time that there might be a bend coming up. And so because I was able to identify the fact that there is a bend coming up, uh, what I'm looking at is trying to figure out, well, where is this like resistance at? And when I look for that resistance on the chart, because I read charts as well, I found it on the two day after doing multiple time frame analysis. I got to the two day and I was able to find a very strong uh, resistance level. It, it is minor, but strong. Uh, it's not major. Uh, so a major resistance level uh, actually causes a turn that's so big that you know you want to hold the trend for a long period of time. It's like a it'll cause uh, a retracement. Uh, but a minor resistance level, it is uh, strong within itself but just a little less, whereas it only causes a pullback, not a retracement. And a pullback is shorter and much more aggressive 
and risky to trade. It's better to trade a retracement rather than a pullback uh, because the pullback, again, can turn back around to the big picture trend at any moment. So that's why we call it aggressive. So this is a pullback, in my opinion, not a retracement. All right. So I just wanted to show you technically we're starting to see signs that this buying pressure, even though it says strong here because it's combining everything. I don't think I showed you that. But over here, uh, if it combines the oscillator with the moving average and you get a summary of the two together. That's what this is here. So instead of just having one versus the other uh, here, you have them combined. And this kind of helps people out whether or not they want to hold their positions or not. So for those of you who don't know how to read charts, uh, here's a good cheat sheet here. All right. Getting back to here and I am well over five minutes. I apologize. But then again, I don't. You about to make some money. Let's do this. All right, so getting back to this here, I do believe it's gonna short here. And when it does short, it comes down here and it's gonna get to this level here on the two day. And then we're gonna be buying. And then once we buy, that's when I'll give you guys what the uh, TP will be on the upside. So let's go there, let's switch uh, P2P indicators here. I'm gonna turn off the low time frame one here. All right. And then I'm also gonna remove these orders because I wanna clean this up so it can look better on the bigger picture booyah 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 save that all right now big picture's on great and let's see if i have it saved i think i do nope i don't come on nope i don't okay so I got to wing this off top of my head. I want to say it's on the, oh, it is. I already had it on the chart. Thank the good Lord. All right. So even off the top of my head, I went straight there. It was a 21 day chart here, which I need to save. And I want to show you big picture. This is what that resistance looks like. Okay. Uh, in here on the two day, I believe we were on. Let's go there. If we go to that two day, Uh, where's that pattern at? Uh, I think I went too far back. I did. So on the two day, we have this pattern here that makes up this resistance level. All right. And so that resistance is between these two pivots of this uh, base candle that we have here. Uh, we identified that uh, also supply on the one week. Uh, we can take a look at that. Fix this up. Uh, here it is on the one week as well. So for those of you who know how to read drop base drops and supply and demand support resistance, uh, you guys, you guys see what I'm talking about here. Uh, so we have what I believe to be a pullback, and that's where I think we're going to get some ability to make some money from short term. Short term meaning only down to here. Remember, this is where all of my buy orders were because I believe this is major support here. If we pull it in here, look at that major support. So I think we're not going to be able to get more than a pullback to just here because this is a racetrack here. So we think we're going to bring it right back down this racetrack. There is no strong uh, support or demand, in my opinion, when it goes up that fast. It didn't have any time to create anything. So that's a racetrack, as we call it. It's going to come right back down. Some people call it an institutional candle. Uh, but when it comes down here, then that's when we can start buying again. All right. Uh, for the technical geeks, let's uh, go back to the 21 day. And let's look at the big picture again. So once we sell here aggressively and we get it down here, it's going to come down to this uh, uptrend wick over wick here which we can see through the bodies. This is an uptrend formation. We also see major support here. And so I'm gonna take my chances here, even in immediate retests uh, there. Uh, so I'm gonna take my chances uh, coming down here. Once we get here, we'll take it back up. But I wanted to show you the big picture why I think this is a minor resistance level, like I said earlier, because we're only gonna get a pullback for it to come here and then continue the uptrend. And when it does, it's gonna blow past this pivot because this is not actual supply. 
This is just simply resistance. And so at some point, this is not going to hold and we're going to get up to here. This is supply here. This is where, this is where it begins. It ends at the, the pivot high here, but this is where it begins. So I want to get in right where it begins. And uh, I think I'm going to move my stop loss above this pivot here. Uh, so I'll probably end up doing uh, something like that. Let's do uh, probably 98.33. That's probably what I'll end up doing. All right. Um, but whatever that is, whatever you guys end up doing, you know, I'll be in here and um, taking that back down. And so big picture, once we get into this trade here, which is going to take us a little while, we got to go through this downtrend and then we got to go all the way back up. Then we get here, then we can start coming down. Uh, it'll be months from now before that happens, I believe. Hopefully not, because I'd love to get paid early. But this right here, we'll take that all the way down, and that's when we'll start cashing out some of this money at 79, 75, 71, 50, 65, 50, 56, 25. Support begins at 53, 97. And so we want to start thinking about buying. Lowest position I'm going to be buying at is 48.55. God bless you guys. Man, this is your boy, Professor Cornelius Ward. I really hope you guys are profiting with me. Send me your comments. I'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to me and the team on our website at ToshiMarkets.com. We are also on Twitter and YouTube at EffectiveHNW. Check us out. Ask us any questions. We'll give you a free analysis. Uh, my boy, Vic, he's the one who reached out and... Uh, told me about Kiwi Yen. I looked at it, analyzed it, gave him a shout out, and here we are. We're all making money together. So reach out to me here at uh, on Telegram at Daily Bread Q and A. Ask us any question about the economy, the markets. Uh, if you want an analysis on anything, whether it's forex, indices, equities, CFDs, cryptocurrency, we got you, boy. Uh, Daily Bread Q and A here at uh, Telegram. All right, man. Uh, follow me if you guys want to be uh, updated on anything that I do, any videos or whatever. And also go ahead and give it a boost, man. Help somebody else out. If you feel like this video blessed you today, go ahead and help somebody else out. And like I said, God bless you guys. Wish you all the best. This is your boy, Professor Cornelius Ward. Thank you for profiting with me. I love you. Peace.